Once upon a time there lived a man. A man who believed in standing up for good. He rode on a great white horse through thick forests and countryside all over Wales, helping poor people in a time where money was short and good was uncommon. His name was Tum Shun Catty. This story has been told to children for decades in Wales. Parents have passed these stories on to their children. And as a small boy, roughly around the age of seven, Richard went on an out into Bracken with his parents. They walked together down a small embankment towards a gracefully flowing stream that entered the mouth of a cave. On further examination into this chasm, he could see, displayed on the far wall of the cave, what appeared to be a great white horse. This depiction seemed to glint its image creating a magical illusion that was captivating, creating an atmosphere of both tranquility and excitement. His mother sat on a large grey stone and he sat next to her. The smell of wild flowers and grass, the whole area glistened and sparkled from the shimmering sunlight. The water reflecting off the rocks created a surrealism that engaged both conscious thought and emotion. It was a beautiful day, it actually was an amazing day. But I was always afraid of you. You were, you were always disappearing and doing things that you shouldn't do. And Daddy had taken Anne and gone exploring. I wouldn't let you go any deeper into that cave because I knew that you'd slip through my fingers and I'd never see you again. So I decided to sit you down and tell you this story of Tom Shunkati. His mother embellishing the story of Tom Shunkati and explaining to Richard that he lived in this very cave which provided him with the secret hideaway when he was evading capture by the High Sheriff. She further elucidated how Tum Shum Kati had, as a tribute to his most beautiful horse, decorated the wall of this cave with its image, an icon that would last eternally. We believe the story of Tum Shum Kati to be true, although the setting of this cave cannot be authenticated. Locating the actual cave of Tum Shum Kati has now become Richard's ambition thus re-engaging a childhood nostalgia, providing a unique and inspirational legacy of a maternal relationship. I was told a story over 30 years ago that this was the cave of Tum Shunkati. Now, because we're in Brecon, when I first got here this morning, the sun was shining. And because we're in the mountains, the weather's actually closed in on us. But that makes me think, when I was told this story about Tum Shunkati, I was told it when the water was glistening, the plants were looking beautiful around me, everything was luscious. And it's raining now, and would I have been still inspired by the story in this weather? But looking around and looking back and into the cave itself, the, it still has this air of magic. I don't know if the camera can pick this up, but there is mist coming from the cave. It's, it's absolutely stunning. The water that's flowing into the cave, everything is coming back to when I was initially told the story of Tum Shun Kati. Now, since I moved to Lampeter, I, I was told that the, the story of Tum Shun Kati in the cave wasn't true. It never happened in Brecon. I was actually told that the cave was in a place near Llyn Brian. Um, and this fills me with, with lots of mixed emotion because this story was passed down from my mother's teacher to my mother and it's something that stuck with me. And the place is magical. It, it's got that feeling of magic. The, the cave itself, it's got one of the widest openings in Great Britain. And as you look into the cave of Portharogov, and this was the very horse that my mother told me was the horse that Tum Shunkati drew on the wall. It's developed that the horse is actually calcium. It's never been painted on. It's very eerie. And there's something about this cave that's mysterious. But maybe that's the fascination with caves. Maybe that was my fascination with Portharogov, which drew me to learn about Tum Shunkati. Tum Shunkati was born in 1530 in a small farm called Portharfanon in Trigaron. He was a legitimate son of Sean Ap David. 
During Tum's time, Mid Wales was notorious for thieves and outlaws. The young Tum was regularly in trouble with the law, but used cunning tricks to avoid capture. His favourite hiding place was a cave in Randomoyne on Dinas Hill. I first heard that the cave wasn't in Brecon from the TV series Weatherman Walking. I wanted to ask the presenter, Derek Brockaway, what inspired him to cover the story of Tum Shunkati, so I travelled down to Cardiff to the BBC studios. I also wanted to authenticate the cave on Dinas Hill. Well, I think Tum Shunkati is a, is a great mythical figure, a, a kind of Welsh Robin Hood, and, and the stories about him, uh, of course, are based on a real man with a, a bit of a shady past. Unfortunately, I never actually got to his cave as the route of our walk was uh, quite a distance away from it. But our researchers on the programme did go there and said it was a very evocative spot. Uh, it's not a big cave, not even a cave really, uh, just a cleft in a rock, a hideaway to crawl into. But inside you can read hundreds of names scratched into the stone of all the walkers uh, who have visited over the last hundred years or so. Um, the aim of Weatherman Walking is to encourage uh, people to get out and enjoy Wales, the, the, the fresh air and the wonderful scenery, but also to learn more about uh, Welsh history, including characters like Tom. I suppose you have this strong link to the Tum Shonkati story. It's something that defined your, it was a defining story in your childhood. And because you've been told that actually it exists somewhere else, that's, that's kind of almost undermined who you thought you were. I think all too often people get caught up in the facts, if you like. And I think whether or not, I, I imagine um, Tum probably sheltered in lots of caves in his lifetime and to tie him to just one particular cave and exclude all others is perhaps unwise. Myths are like polished stones. I do feel I want to chip away at the stone and find the real story of the cave. I have come to Trigaron to talk with the school about their local hero, Tom Shunkati. Who is Tom Shunkati? He like steals money from rich people and gives it to the poor. Why would he uh, steal money from the rich to give to the poor? Maybe because he wanted to help people that weren't so fortunate as him because he came from quite a rich background. Okay, and do you think that was a good thing? Yeah, because the poor can have a house yeah, and live. So what do you think of Tom Shunkati? He's basically our local hero and we were celebrating 400 years last year. Why did you choose to make the film about Tom Shunkati? So that people can know him and he lives in Chicago. Right. And uh, you both played a part in there? Yeah. yeah. Okay, Rebecca, what part did you play? I was Lizzie Pooh, the old woman that Tom was helping to get a free saucepan. Lizzie Pooh wanted a saucepan and she was complaining that the rent was too high and the chickens weren't laying. And then Tom took her to the square where there was two men, the Smith brothers, and they had a saucepan and Tom said, I can find a hole in this saucepan. And they said it wouldn't be any good to me if there was a hole in the saucepan. So he found, well, he he put the head on um, the Smith brothers' sort, um, head and then um, he said, there's no holes in here. And then Tom got the saucepan and said, how do you fit your head in it if there isn't any holes in it? So then he got the saucepan for free for Lizzie Pooh. So can you tell me about Tom Shunkati's cave? Have you ever been to Tom Shunkati's cave? No. no. Would, would you want to go and find the cave yourselves? Well, I wouldn't really want to go and find the cave because then it would ruin what I think. Because it's probably something quite basic and people probably just make it, and make story, because when it's passed from generation to generation, people change stuff. So it's probably been changed, so it's probably nothing like what I think it is. David Morgan is a local expert on Tum Shunkati. Before I go and find the cave, I stayed in Trigarund to talk with him. I remember the first time I heard Tum Shunkati's name being uttered. I was in the class um, standard one, it was in the primary school in Llandovery, where the teacher showed us a photograph of the track going up to Tom Shonkati's cave. It was a cave, it was somewhere which you could try and get to. It was the adventure of getting to it which made you feel a bit, um, well, a part of, a part of history, a part of of uh, what I call it is the Indiana Jones experience where you're, you can just f f feel this and hear this music behind you. So people of course have gone to the cave, they've etched their names on there and I think one of the oldest etchings is something like 1723 or 1729. There's no evidence that Tom 
ever ever was there or lived there. He certainly didn't live there because it's, it's rather inhospitable and and um, remote. Really, it's, it's it's away from the road. It's it's there um, by the river Towy, uh, the stream. The the river goes past and it makes a uh, thunderous noise when when it's in full spate, as it were. But the cave is somewhere which people can go and visit. He was the Robin Hood of Wales. Robin Hood of Wales. <laughs> because everybody knows Robin Hood. Look, look recently, there's a, there's a Australian playing the part of, of Robin Hood. How silly is that? <laughs> how, how ridiculous is that? You know, what next? Everybody knows what Robin Hood stands for. And therefore, having that link with Robin Hood was important to the society when we created our programme of events last year. So, so people would think, well, if they didn't know who Tom Shankati was, they could, they could link him with Robin Hood and say, oh, he's, he's the Robin Hood of Wales. Um, and there are other similar characters all across Europe. There's a similar character in Russia. There's a similar character in Italy. There's a similar character in France. And God forbid, maybe there's a similar character in Romania in the form of Dracula.